Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining our WatchGuard and Big Leaf webinar, SD-WAN, One Size Doesn't Fit All. My name is Christine Ramsdale, Marketing Specialist here at WatchGuard. I'm also joined by two speakers, Brendan Patterson, VP of Product Management at WatchGuard, and Jeff Burchett, Co-Founder and VP of Sales at Big Leaf. But before we begin, I want to go over a few housekeeping items. The first is that the audio is streamed through your computer only, so there is no dial-in. Second, all the widgets on your menu are resizable and movable. Third, there is a Q&A box in your widget menu, and any questions will be answered at the end. But at any time, please enter your questions into the box. The on-demand recording of this webinar is available the same link as how you entered this webinar and it'll also be available on our webinars page on WatchGuard.com. Lastly, the, the, we do offer webinar credit, CPE credit. One hour equals one credit. So in this case, this webinar is for an hour. So this is available for one credit. Please check in with your certification body for further details. And without further ado, I'm going to give it off to Brendan to start with a short bio of himself. Go ahead, Brendan. Hi, Christine. I'm Brendan Patterson, VP of Product Management. I've been at WatchGuard over uh, 10 years now. And in product management, I'm responsible for the network security area of our product line. Uh, WatchGuard is very much a security-focused company uh, with advanced malware detection, uh, intrusion detection, and things like that. But along with that, people aren't always aware, we have a lot of networking and routing capabilities in our product line. I work closely with our engineering team on defining uh, requirements and new features for the product line. And today we'll talk more specifically about SD-WAN. Jeff? Yeah, thanks, Brendan. Thanks, Christine. And, and thank you for everyone for taking the time this morning to uh, sit and listen to our thoughts. Uh, my name is Jeff Burchett, uh, one of the co-founders here at Big Leaf Networks. Uh, I've been on this ride since uh, early 2013. Uh, so I've had the opportunity to see the SD-WAN market evolve uh, from the point that before it was even really called SD-WAN to the point that we've reached today where it's uh, one of the hottest and most exciting uh, points of conversation in the networking space today. Uh, excited to be here and, and work alongside WatchGuard. Uh, for those of you that aren't aware, this isn't the first time that we've done a webinar like this. Uh, we at Big Leaf have been very fortunate to work with the team at WatchGuard, including Brendan, uh, over the past 12 to 18 months and have carved out a very nice relationship in seeing how our two companies and, and technologies can be very complementary to each other and looking forward to sharing that today. So in today's agenda, we're going to cover SD-WAN technology, why it matters. Um, we'll talk about some sample use cases. Um, technology discussions can always seem very abstract. Uh, so Jeff and I actually are going to relate it to a couple of companies and implementations they've made using our technology and combined technology. And some of the things you'll need to consider before deploying, too, and how to make uh, SD-WAN really work for your business needs. And to, to kick this off, guys, uh, for those of you that uh, hopped on the webinar this morning uh, in hopes of listening to Brendan and I battle it out for SD-WAN supremacy, I uh, hate to disappoint you. Uh, that's not what you're, you're going to have the opportunity to see today. Uh, we at Big Leaf had the opportunity to uh, co-sponsor a couple of events with WatchGuard over the past six weeks. Their uh, Apogee events bring together their best uh, partners in both uh, the Americas and the EMEA region. And it was interesting at, at these events because a lot of people, frankly, were surprised to see us there. When we said we were an SD-WAN company, they looked at us a little cross-eyed saying, well, if you do SD-WAN and WatchGuard does SD-WAN, aren't you guys competing? Uh, you know, and, and why would WatchGuard invite one of their competitors into an event like this? And I, I took that as, as really a, a great example of, of, to a certain degree, a disservice that's been done to each of you as, as partners, as customers, as, as technologists, that, that we as an industry have, have unfortunately kind of set this up to, to make you think that all SD-WANs are the same and that you are going to pick one SD-WAN at the end of the day to, to do anything and everything you can. 
SD WAN is not a very specifically defined or defined technology like Wi Fi. SD WAN is not an IEEE standard. SD WAN is much more along the lines of, of a general term used to describe the next generation of technology that can be used in, in any different number of ways. To ask which SD WAN is better is the equivalent of asking, well, which SaaS platform is better, Salesforce or Office 365? Right? They, those two platforms do very different things. They provide different values to, to a, an organization, much the way that SD-WAN and different SD-WAN providers can provide different types of, of value uh, to each of your organizations. So what we hope to do today was, was to not help you decide which SD-WAN is the ultimate SD-WAN, but rather what are two different perspectives on SD-WAN and how would you apply these different perspectives to solve your unique problems. And I think we can all agree that, that none of us sell nor buy networking because it's fun. Rather, it's, we do it because networking serves a very specific purpose. And we're here to help you solve business challenges and, and, and business problems. And depending on the problem you're facing, both WatchGuard and BigLeaf have very unique value propositions to help you meet those needs. We're going to hopefully walk through today th th these two different perspectives. Brendan will start out walking through how WatchGuard's built a phenomenal platform to address the site-to-site -site networking needs that your organization needs and how their SD-WAN platform can help you better meet those needs. Well, I'll get into this concept of a site-to-cloud design and addressing the, the ever-elusive challenge of, of connecting your location out to any number of different cloud and, and SaaS environments. And then we'll wrap things up here uh, walking through a, a customer that really had both challenges and saw value in both the platforms and, and walk through why they ended up choosing a solution with both WatchGuard and BigLeaf to, to meet all of their needs. So with that, I want to start this off by turning it over to, to Brendan to walk through the WatchGuard platform and, and how it's uniquely designed to be one of the best site-to-site SD-WAN platforms on the market today. Brendan, I'll leave it to you. Okay, thanks, Jeff. Nice introduction and uh, talk about how uh, we work together in this one technology area. And um, first, I just want to set a little background and talk about SD-WAN and uh, some of the benefits, challenges it can help before I get into specifics on the WatchGuard solution. And SD-WAN is really, um, like Jeff said, a collection of technologies. It's not one specific uh, IEEE standard, and it really can help benefit organizations with uh, many distributed sites. And if you're running an organization with a lot of distributed sites, you know you're facing a lot of challenges today. Uh, so many business applications have moved to the cloud, SaaS applications like Salesforce, uh, so on. It's so key to your business to be able to access those applications with not a lot of latency and always have uh, guaranteed connectivity into that cloud. Uh, at the same time as you're building out, um, you're seeing a lot of complexity in networking, uh, multiple network paths everywhere for re redundancy, a lot of different standards, a lot of different network complexity. And while you have to do all that, you're facing probably one of the most uh, difficult job markets in many years uh, when it comes to trying to hire skilled IT staff or experienced network engineers that can help you build out the infrastructure that you need. Now, SD-WAN uh, can help you improve your IT operations. Uh, SD-WAN really grew out of uh, software-defined networking, and it's uh, applying some of those concepts to um, the distributed environments where it is software-defined wide area networking, and it gives you a way to build a hybrid WAN architecture uh, really to help you with better cloud app performance, and that's an area the Big Leap solution really shines. Um, SD-WAN uh, helps companies control their networking costs. There are a lot of ISPs out there that are quite happy to sell expensive network connections and lines and not just one, redundancy, MPLS, and things like that. Uh, controlling and uh, efficiently using those type of networks is a big factor for many people. 
And often I talk to customers who know they're spending a lot of money on their network connectivity, but they don't necessarily know how good it is or how well it's performing historically. Uh, so SD-WAN, it, it's a group of technologies that's going to help you simplify your WAN management, providing automation for both monitoring and uh, controlling and using the best link. And again, like I said, IT staff, really hard to find skilled network engineers these days. So SD-WAN introduces the concept of automation for many of the uh, uh, network decisions you need to make. So let's look a little more specifically at some of the features or deployments you see in an SD-WAN environment. Typically, you're seeing in a remote or a distributed location that you want a hybrid WAN with multiple ISP uh, links or connections. Often, there's also a private line, an MPLS, uh, which becomes a more expensive option than the ISP configuration. And a key factor of SD-WAN is the ability to select the appropriate uh, path to use or the best uh, internet connectivity. Uh, driving factor we see is many people moving away from those expensive MPLS lines and they realize that a lot of the network traffic they need to do can happen over the public internet. But if you are to do that, you really need to have good assurance in the quality of that line. And so SD-WAN features give you the ability to uh, dynamically select between uh, some of those different lines depending on the quality that you can dynamically measure in your internet connectivity. And that's done by measuring things like uh, jitter, packet loss, latency, uh, as you evaluate the quality of an internet connection. So WatchGuard actually, as I mentioned at the start, it has a strong uh, core networking capability in our, um, in our uh, routing capabilities on uh, our WatchGuard firewall we call the Firebox. And we've had a number of features that really fall into the bucket of SD-WAN technologies for many years now. Uh, classic one is what we call multi-WAN. Uh, where a firewall could uh, use more than one internet connectivity and if one failed, uh, switch to another one. And that was uh, historically an, an either or. If the internet connection went down, we switched over to another one. Uh, we have dynamic routing capabilities. WatchGuard as a security company has very strong VPN capabilities. We can do a, a virtual interface VPN, which is a routed VPN between multiple sites. Uh, we have uh, VPNs uh, that can be set up. Uh, typically, what we call a site-to-site -site VPN is a branch office VPN that's IPsec based. We can also set up uh, those branch office VPNs even over SSL. Uh, rapid deploy is a feature for zero-touch deployment. Um, when it comes to networking, uh, managing quality of service and bandwidth is uh, key capabilities. We can do traffic management by application. We can even apply quotas to application traffic. We can uh, use a 4G LTE modem as an interface on our Firebox, plug in a USB modem, and use that as an interface. A lot of our retail customers use that as a failover capability. So you can see, historically, WatchGuard has had a lot of these features that fit into the uh, hybrid WAN architecture environment. But late last year, in Q3 of 2018 and Q4, we announced a couple of releases and started marketing the appliance as an SD-WAN uh, capable appliance because of one major feature we introduced. We introduced the ability to uh, fail over from one line to another, not just based on a multi-WAN evaluation, is the line up or down, but we start dynamically measuring the quality of a connection. 
We can look at jitter, latency, packet loss on that connection. And maybe we determine that the link is still up, but it's not good enough quality for a voice call anymore. So we can switch that connection over to another line. We do that dynamically. Uh, we can uh, use different ways to monitor that link, uh, looking at DNS, looking at the IP address, if it's a VPN of the remote uh, peering of the VPN connection. And this measurement just doesn't apply to uh, connections into cloud applications, anything like that. A lot of the use case for SD-WAN and WatchGuard is over VPN connectivity. Uh, with branch office VPNs between many distributed sites, uh, typically people want to set up a branch office VPN from the distributed location back into headquarters. And we can evaluate uh, the quality of that VPN link connectivity and sail over to a different connection if we need to. One of the features we talk about in terms of automa automation and simplification, and you'll hear this a lot in the SD-WAN world, is something called zero-touch deployment. It's the ability uh, to deploy a box remotely without having to uh, send a technician out onto that site to set up and configure that. Uh, a lot of SD-WAN requirements, uh, as you say, it's not specifically defined in any standard, but a general feature of the uh, SD-WAN solution is the ability to manage it centrally and simplify, simplify the deployment out to remote locations. So for many years, WatchGuard has had a feature called Rapid Deployment. And Rapid Deploy allows you to set up a configuration file in advance. It's hosted in our uh, cloud management uh, solution. And uh, as that box is sent out to a remote location, the person at that remote site just needs to plug it into power, uh, connect uh, the uh, cable into the internet connectivity, and it will download the appropriate configuration file and set that up. Uh, we've over 12,000 deployments that have used Rapid Deploy and saved a lot of time in doing that today. Uh, I have an example here of a, a company in Germany that has used Rapid Deploy. And in their case, it, it's been a valuable uh, addition because uh, this is a company that sets up cement plants around the world. Uh, they can't afford to uh, send a network technician out to Angola where they need to set up something remotely there. They can take advantage of our rapid deploy capability and have it configured in advance. And the box, once it's plugged in, connected, will download and get the appropriate uh, configuration. One of the big use cases, and Jeff uh, used this to highlight perhaps kind of some of the different approach between WatchGuard and VigLeap when it comes to SD-WAN, is the ability to control uh, network connectivity between VPN connections, uh, between private lines. So let's look, for example, at an example topology. A uh, typical customer may have a WatchGuard uh, Firebox out at the remote site. Uh, they may also uh, have a WatchGuard Firebox at other remote sites, but they probably have a, uh, a cluster of one of our bigger boxes at the headquarters location. And they will have um, branch office VPN connections between remote and the headquarters. Uh, Simplify just showing one here. Sometimes there will be a couple of uh, ISP lines there as options. Often there's an MPLS line too. Uh, the WatchGuard firewall itself doesn't act as a MPLS router, so there will typically be a couple of uh, routers terminating those MPLS connections. And MPLS essentially is configured as an internal interface on the Firebox. Uh, the branch office VPN virtual interface, we can do routed traffic over those branch office VPNs. Uh, that could be configured as a failover interface. 
And now you can make routing decisions based on the quality of the lines you see. So, for example, you can decide that in normal business operation, all of my voice traffic goes over this VPN connectivity between the uh, between the uh, distributed site and into the headquarters location. But if ever we see a degradation in that line, if the link we're monitoring, the quality isn't good enough, we can fail over to that MPLS connection and cut down. Because of this, we're cutting down our usage of the MPLS capabilities. Uh, other examples of this may be uh, people failing over between different VPN connectivities. So on the WatchGuard Firebox, we're offering a lot of different options for controlling and managing that flow of network traffic. And for people who are WatchGuard uh, customers on the line, this is actually an example we've uh, documented in our configurations for our latest releases. Uh, if you go to our technical training section of the website, this is one of the examples we have documented with some sample firewall configurations and more details on how this is uh, set up. So here's an example how that documented configuration looks uh, you know, with the IP addresses, with where the MPLS routers fit, uh, how you would set up SD-WAN actions on the firewall policies to implement that. I'm not going to go into this detail in the webinar today, but I really just wanted to highlight that this level of detail is available uh, on our website for people uh, who want to dive deeper and understand what does this really look like when you're configuring it on the firewalls and the firewall policy. But I do want to highlight an example uh, of how customers use this type of WatchGuard technology. And uh, classic type of WatchGuard company, customer called Miller Paint. They run uh, in retail environment. They've uh, over 50 paint stores in the Northwest, Washington, Oregon, and Idaho, uh, close to 400 employees. They're a company that was paying $12,000 per month for their MPLS connectivity uh, from a uh, service provider, and they were getting uh, some secure, managed security services as part of that, too. And they found they weren't very happy with the level of customer service they were getting from that service provider. They figured out that they could implement a watch guard solution, use dynamic routing over branch office VPN uh, connectivities. Uh, they were able to take uh, advantage of some of our security features uh, in retail, payment card industry, PCI compliance was a big deal for them. Uh, so they used some of the network segmentation capabilities of the firewall, used some of our security and network uh, reporting as part of the uh, compliance uh, environment for PCI. And so this is a public case study available on our website. I've included the link here in the webinar. Uh, so anyone can uh, follow up on that if they want to see more details of that. But the net to the business was uh, they got better performance in their network and also cost savings of over 160 k per year. Uh, so at WatchGuard, we're often uh, – uh, emphasizing the security message, but in SD-WAN and networking, this is uh, an area where we can really point to some quantifiable value and savings that our customers see uh, when it comes to implementing uh, some of the newer network topologies and leveraging uh, technology like SD-WAN. So before I turn it back over to uh, Jeff, to talk some more about the Big Leaf solution, I do want to emphasize that WatchGuard is so much more than networking and routing. Uh, we're known as a security company. We package our solutions on our WatchGuard uh, firewalls into support only, a basic security suite, or a total security suite. And the basic security suite runs many of the uh, standard or more tradi traditional security services like application identification, web filtering, uh, gateway antivirus that's signature-based, some reputation um, filtering. 
few years ago, we expanded our offering to include a total security suite, and there we add more advanced security services. We do things like uh, sandboxing. If we see suspicious files coming through the firewall that uh, we haven't seen before, we can send that to a sandbox in the cloud where we detonate it and look for any uh, characteristics of malware. Um, we have Intelligent AV, which is an artificial intelligence-based engine uh, for scanning files that doesn't rely on any uh, security signatures. And so, as you see, we have uh, a lot of VPN capability, SD-WAN, uh, but WatchGuard truly is a security solution. And I think as we look at the Big Leaf solution, you'll realize how uh, the Big Leaf team is smart enough to know that security is in their space, and they partner and work well with the uh, UTM and firewall company like WatchGuard uh, if you need to add security into your network. Uh, so again, uh, with that, really quick highlight here of the security capabilities of WatchGuard. Again, so much more information available on our website. But I'm going to turn it over to Jeff now to talk more about some of the big leaf use cases and maybe not so much looking at a site to site uh, connectivity, but more looking at cases where you want to optimize um, your uh, performance to your cloud applications. Thanks, Brendan. And, and as, as Brendan alluded to, we at Big Leap are, are been very excited to work with the team at WatchGuard because of their complete vision around security and their track record and, and success in that space. You know, whereas I think Brendan provides a very strong background of how to build the next generation of a site-to-site -site network, uh, we in the industry are, are seeing a significant shift in networking as a whole. And that shift is not, in my opinion, being driven by SD-WAN, but, but rather being driven by where our applications live and how we need to architect networks accordingly. And that's where Big Leaf has tried to fit into the market and ultimately excel. You know, we've seen uh, through successful partnerships with, with groups like WatchGuard and then through our partner network and, and with our customers that many of you on this call have been in control of your own domain. You've built out a local area network to meet the needs of your organization today. And oftentimes that includes using a WatchGuard firewall at the, end, at, at the edge to protect that environment. And now, a lot of you are working through this exciting digital transformation that is moving more and more applications out into cloud and SaaS environments. You know, much like we have partnerships with WatchGuard on the, the network security side of things, we at Big Leaf have built out a strong partnership network with nationwide UCAS providers and SaaS providers, and including Microsoft them, themselves with their Office 365 offering. And for each of you that are, are architecting your LAN well, and making the right decisions when it comes to SaaS and cloud and, and UCAS applications, you're still stuck with one major challenge. It's that elusive path in the middle. The internet itself that for many people really drives the success or failure of their cloud and SaaS initiatives. Because in these environments, bad internet ultimately means bad application performance. And that's what we want to help you fix at Big Leaf. What we focus very specifically on is architecting a site to cloud network, being at the forefront of this migration away from applications living in your local area network or in a private environment out into these public SaaS and in cloud and UCAS environments and helping you architect a network that is gonna ensure that A, you can reach every one of the applications that you choose to as a business and B, those applications are gonna perform the way that they're supposed to. With Big Leaf, we feel like the, the way that you need to start a site to cloud network is you need to be where both you exist and your applications exist. You know, for many of you, it, it looks like this. You exist in your LAN, protected with a, a watch guard firewall, yet you have a need to connect to any number of different cloud and, and SaaS environments. Over the past, years, past year, you've migrated more and more things out to these environments you've moved away from an on-site PBX and into a UCAS provider. You've dumped your Exchange server and moved to Office 365. You've stopped building your own CRM or ERP applications and moved to things like Salesforce and, and NetSuite in the cloud. 
and you now need to architect a network accordingly. To start with that, we at Big Leaf decided to go where the cloud itself was. We built out our own, what used to be nationwide, now international Big Leaf Cloud Access Network, getting us into all the environments that your cloud and SaaS providers ultimately are. We wanted to build onto the backbone of the internet because we knew that's where your customer, where your applications lived and where you ultimately needed to get to. But we knew we needed to pair that network with an on-site resource. So we built out our own set of, of Big Leaf routers that sit at your customer prem. Notably, these routers sit outside of your WatchGuard firewall. We, as, as Brendan spoke before, WatchGuard has a phenomenal background in, in building a strong UTM environment and, and securing your network at the edge. And what we wanted to do as an organization was not to compete with the likes of, of WatchGuard and try to reinvent the wheel. Rather, what we wanted to do was to build an SD-WAN solution that could better empower those secure edges by deploying in a manner that is transparent. So notably, for those of you on the call and had a chance to, to look in some of the Q&A while, while Brendan was speaking, the Big Leaf router always sits outside of the WatchGuard firewall, and it deploys in a manner that is completely transparent to that firewall. The handoff from the Big Leaf router to the WatchGuard firewall looks like a public internet connection. So for those of you that are existing WatchGuard customers and wondering, well, how would I implement Big Leaf into my WatchGuard environment? It's, it's frankly, it's very simple. It's the equivalent of changing an internet connection on that firewall. You would simply update the public IP addresses on your WatchGuard firewall. You would not go in and change policies on that firewall because we know you've architected those policies in a manner that gives you the best security uh, that you need in your organization today. And to wrap the solution together, what we've done at Big Leaf is we've connected that on-site router to that cloud access network with our own proprietary technology. And this is ultimately where the, the secret sauce of, of Big Leaf lies. The Big Leaf platform, much like the WatchGuard platform, bookends its, its SD-WAN solution by connecting one box to another box. We connect your router to our infrastructure and our cloud access network. And then we use many of the same principles WatchGuard does in that unique routing. Our software is intelligent enough to monitor each of your internet connections from every one of your locations out to our network 10 times a second, uniquely looking at things like packet loss, latency, jitter, uh, available throughput end-to-end -end over an internet connection. So if you're using uh, internet connections that have a tendency to vary in throughput, things like cable or DSL or, or microwave where throughput varies, we're constantly monitoring that available throughput. And while we're monitoring that throughput, we're also uniquely identifying each one of your applications. You, know, you don't need to go in and set up unique policies for things like UCAS versus Office 365 versus Salesforce versus web browsing. We auto-identify those applications. And we use the auto-identification of those applications alongside that unique circuit monitoring uh, 10 times a second to match the flow of your applications to the circuits that make the best sense for those applications. Routing voice, for example, over the path with the best packet loss latency and jitter, while moving things like a Microsoft patch download over the path with the best throughput. And then adapting the flow of that traffic in real time as those circuit conditions change. And as we adapt them using one of our unique feature sets, same IP failover, to move traffic between those connections without ever interrupting the, the session itself we were able to maintain your public IP address regardless of which internet connection you're using to ensure that every single application you're, moving, uh, uh, you're using moves seamlessly between those internet connections. For us, this ultimately builds out an environment that is uniquely poised to meet the needs of customers and partners that are at the forefront of that digital transformation and that cloud migration. We at Big Leaf have, have architected the solution that uniquely meets the needs of a site-to-cloud architecture by leveraging intelligent software, not humans and, and strict policies, but, but rather software that's smart enough to adapt in real time to changing environments and the changing needs of, of the applications running over top of those environments. And doing it in a manner that is completely transparent to the secure perimeter that you've built both with WatchGuard today and what you're going to do with their next generation of security solutions in the future. With that, we've unlocked a whole new level of visibility into that path 
you know, the, the black hole of the internet that whether it's you as a customer or you as a managed service writer or partner have struggled seeing into and understanding where the challenges ultimately lie for your SaaS and cloud and UCAS applications, we now have that visibility, monitoring those paths end to end 10 times a second and unlocking that information for you to make better decisions on how you architect your network in the future. And doing it with a 24 by seven support organization you know, poised to help you fight through the challenges that you're going to face through these cloud and, and, and SaaS migrations. I think one of the best examples of this, and, and one of the customers I know both us and, and WatchGuard are proud to speak about, is the DP Fox family of, of companies. Very specifically inside the, the DP Fox family of companies, we shared a project with Fox Motors. And Fox Motors is a large chain of, of new and used car dealerships and motorcycle dealerships, uh, predominantly throughout Michigan, but also in, in several other Midwestern states. And I think one of the things that, that makes Fox Motors and DP Fox an interesting case study is the fact that they're not that unique of a company. The problem that they faced is very similar to the problem that many of you are facing today, and that's how do we adapt to this digital transformation? You know, selling cars is a very traditional business and something that, that the Fox family of companies has been doing for a very long time. But technology is changing the industry itself. You know, for, for Fox Motors, the very specific challenge they had was the evolution of their dealer management platform. What used to be a software application that they purchased and housed on servers in their major dealerships and then connected together with site-to-site -site networks was moving. It was moving away from an on-prem application and into a SaaS application. And for those of you that aren't familiar with what a dealer management platform looks like, it touches every aspect of the dealership, from new car transactions to support to ordering parts to HR, to everything that a dealership does, they do within that dealer management platform. Not connecting to that platform means not doing business for Fox Motors. With that shift of moving off of, of hardware on-prem and into the SaaS environment, their CIO was, was left with a whole new set of challenges. How do I architect the next generation of network to ensure that this digital transformation, this cloud migration will be successful because he cannot afford for it to not be successful. It's ultimately what drives the success of, of the organization. I think Grant, who is their CIO, said it best. He only had one metric, and that metric was uptime. Can his users get to that application every single time they need to? Now, Grant also, at the time of, of having to deal with this migration, still had to acknowledge the fact that they still had other applications that lived in their environment, that they still had the need to connect their sites together to access other applications that were important to their users, as well as maintain a secure perimeter. If you think about the type of transactions a car dealership does, they are subject to every level of compliance that, that you could imagine today. Grant initially thought that SD-WAN was going to cure all his ills and, and be the one thing he needed to, to, serve all of the, to, to serve all of his needs. And working with a partner went through a very exhaustive research. I think for many of you, you may look at this saying, well, great, I understand that he has both site-to-site -site needs, site-to-cloud needs. There are plenty of SD-WAN platforms out there. I'm sure he could pick one, and one box would meet all of his needs. Unfortunately, that wasn't the case. As he went through all of his unique needs, he realized that there wasn't a single box solution on the market that can address both his site to cloud needs as well as his site to site needs and maintain the security that he needed to ensure the success of his business. For him, uh, he needed a different type of solution. And after that research, he ended up, uh, he ended up looking at a multi-vendor solution. And what he ultimately landed on was a joint solution from both WatchGuard and from Big Leaf. Picking WatchGuard for their UTM uh, solution with the firebox and site-to-site -site needs with their SD-WAN offering, and Big Leaf to ensure that they could always get to their dealer track, dealer management platform, ensuring success in, in the full uh, gamut of, of requirements that his organization had put in front of him. I think that the lesson, the, one of the most exciting lessons to be learned from, from Grant in, in this digital transformation was the need to really look at his unique needs 
and not just assume that any one provider, any one solution is going to meet the needs of everything he's doing. For each of you on this call, as, as you look at your own digital transformation and your site-to-site -site needs versus your site-to-cloud needs today, actively consider looking at solutions that may involve multiple vendors to give you the best solution when it comes to security, uptime, performance, and reliability, with the hope being that, that WatchCard and Bigly for the best solution with that. So with that, guys, I think it's a great time to turn this over to the, the Q&A component. Yes, thank you, Jeff and Brendan, for that great information. We are answering questions right now, so please, in your question box, if you have one, please enter your questions right now. So the first question I have here is, does SD-WAN kill VPN, either of you? Um, I'll, I'll take that one, Christine. I, I don't see SD-WAN as a VPN killer. In fact, uh, analysts like Gartner emphasize uh, requirements like secure VPN connectivity can be an essential part of uh, an SD-WAN uh, solution. In fact, I, I would maybe say SD-WAN is maybe more of an MPLS killer. It allows you to get away from those expensive uh, private lines and maybe leverage uh, VPNs over public internet instead of uh, a costly private connection. No, Jeff, any thoughts on that? Yeah, I, I, I would echo some of that. I think in our environment, we see SD-WAN being the perfect complement to VPNs and ultimately empowering mm -hmm. VPNs to be better than they've ever been. I think the knock on VPNs in the past were they were only as good as their underlying network connectivity. If you had bad Internet, you had a bad VPN, and there was no way around that. With SD-WAN, you're now architecting the best Internet environment to run a VPN over the top of. So in my opinion, I think VPNs will thrive as more and more customers implement SD-WAN. Perfect. Thank you both. Another question I have here is, I know you talked about the partnership, but does WatchGuard own Big Leaf? <laughs> uh, as a, a co-founder and co-owner of Big Leaf, uh, I can tell you that uh, my equity hasn't changed here at Big Leaf, so, so no. Uh, we've worked very closely with WatchGuard. We very much uh, enjoy the partnership with them, but Big Leaf is still an independently owned company. Perfect. Thank you, Jeff. And another question here for Brendan. Does WatchGuard dynamic WAN path selection switch connections at the session level or packet level? Um, it's really configurable, and uh, one of the options to be aware of uh, as we added the SD-WAN capabilities is some of the failback capabilities. Um, so when a we fail over, when a line quality drops, we can also control under what conditions we will fail back um, to the other line. You can manually fail back. You can uh, keep active sessions uh, going over the new line and route new sessions over the original line if uh, quality is good again, or you can immediately fail back. So uh, generally I'd say it, it's session-based, but there is a degree of configurability there too. Great. Thank you, Brendan. And another question I have here is, when moving a voice connection between lines, is it done without interrupting the call? Yeah, so uh, I'd uh, say assuming that, uh, I'll take it first, one, assuming that we're discussing a, a UCAS environment connecting to, uh, out to a, a hosted VoIP provider, uh, with Big Leap, yes, we do it without interrupting the call. And we do that because in our deployment model, when you, purchase Big Leaf services, we issue you a new block of public IP addresses. We announce those IP addresses via our own uh, international backbone. And your traffic is then pushed to our network first before ultimately being tunneled over your internet connections and down onto your location. With this architecture, we're able to maintain the IP address regardless of which internet connection we're delivering the service over. This ensures that not only phone calls can move between internet connections without interruption, but every single application you're using can move between internet connections without interruption because we maintain that public IP address. Perfect, thank you. 
Okay, so I have another question here is, can we do link bonding for SD-WAN? My guess is this probably varies by platform. Brennan, I'll let you answer the, the first part of that, then I'll answer this from the Big Leaf perspective. Yeah, so in the WatchGuard case, no, we can't do uh, link bonding. And it, it's a question we get. So, Jeff? Yeah, in, in the Big Leaf environment, what we do is we do what we call session-based load balancing. So it is an active, active environment. We are using all available paths at all times, and we're using them for what they're best for. So assuming both paths are clean and you've got multiple voice over IP phone calls as well as multiple Salesforce sessions uh, and multiple, let's say, web browsing sessions, et cetera, we would equally distribute those across those two paths using both paths and giving you full access uh, to the available paths itself. In the event that performance were to change on either of those paths, we would adapt uh, the distribution of those sessions. If one path, for example, had a 1% packet loss, we're going to move things like voice off of that path, but we may leave web browsing on that path. So while we do give you active-active uh, load balancing and using all the available paths, traditional link bonding of one connection look at, or two connections looking like one single connection, we don't do that. Frankly, we haven't seen a, a tremendous amount of individual use case value in that, with the exception of large uploads, you know, nightly backups where you want to take two 100 meg connections and hopefully get them to act like a single 200 meg connection. Uh, there's a great use case for link bonding there, but everything else we've seen in, in our user behavior and user patterns has been a whole bunch of little sessions where session-based load balancing is both the most efficient use of the available paths and the most reliable use of those paths by not breaking up the sessions over those, those different connections. And this is a good example of the differences between the WatchGuard solution and the Big Leap solution. WatchGuard, we've built a lot of capability in. We can measure line connectivity, jitter packet loss, latency, and things like that. But WatchGuard hasn't built out any kind of routing infrastructure or backbone infrastructure in the cloud like Big Leap have. And that gives them more flexibility to cover some of the use cases like um, Jeff mentioned there. You know, the advantage of the WatchGuard solution is we do it all in one box. You've got the security there too. But there are the advanced use cases like Jeff's just talking about that the Big Leaf uh, solution really is a perfect fit for. Perfect. Thank you both. Another question here is the number one feature I'd like to see out of an SD-WAN product is to give me the WAN IP mobility rather than implementing full BGP myself. Is this need served by Big Leaf? And if so, what in what capacity? Uh, that is something we have been doing from day one. Uh, our same IP failover is regularly used as a BGP alternative. You know, while BGP is a, a core technology to the Internet itself and, and critical to the way that the Internet itself operates, from a failover standpoint, for a long time, it's been kind of clunky and messy. Uh, we wanted to fix that. We wanted to give all the benefits of BGP and this concept of maintaining a single or multiple uh, or block of, of public IP addresses across multiple Internet connections but remove the, the, both the financial challenges of that, the expense of, of doing BGP, as well as some of the configuration challenges and the slow response of BGP. So from what you're describing or looking for, I'm very confident that the Big Leaf Same IP failover is exactly what you're looking for. Perfect. Thank you, Jeff. And I know you guys went over this during the presentation, but a question I have here is, can we do seamless failover by SDUS? Yeah, I'm happy to take this. On the Big Leaf side of things, yeah. anything public related from an Internet standpoint, so again, anything pointing at public IP addresses, we can provide seamless failover via our same IP failover, maintaining those IP addresses. Uh, and Brendan, correct me if I'm wrong, but you can provide similar, tech or similar functionality moving between uh, an Internet connection and an MPLS connection with your SD-WAN offering. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah it, it can be seamless. I'd encourage anyone to, uh, you know, review their architecture and uh, configuration and things like that, but, but it, it should be a 
seamless failover. Uh, when you get into specific VoIP solutions, that's where you need to understand how long and what the impact on a call in progress is going to be, but there's no reason uh, we can't fail over without dropping a call as we do that too. Perfect, thank you both. And another question here is, can we replace MPLS with SD-WAN? I'd say yes. Simply, it's one of the big driving use cases of the SD-WAN capabilities, and it's a use case that can be backed up with substantial uh, business case justification, like the, the Miller Paint example I showed is actually uh, a couple years old from our website, and as we've added SD-WAN capabilities, it becomes even more feasible to replace MPLS. question I have here is, do you see customers adding WatchGuard or BigLeaf as a standalone sales cycle, or does it typically come up when they are refreshing bandwidth contracts, et cetera? Uh, one thing that's interesting that comes up is people are refreshing their bandwidth contracts. You will see uh, some of the service providers, definitely seen this here in the United States, trying to sell uh, some SD-WAN capabilities themselves. And usually those solutions are very poorly s supported. They try and even pitch that the SD-WAN solution includes security. And um, uh, typically we'll find any sales cycle is going to start as there's some kind of refresh. Maybe there is a refresh of the security solution. Maybe they're reevaluating their network architecture, looking at ways to cut costs, add more redundancy. Uh, but definitely the a combined WatchGuard and BigLeap solution is going to be so much superior to anything that uh, a, an ISP will be pitching as part of a bandwidth or connectivity sale. Jeff, I don't know if you have any thoughts on that. Yeah, I think the only thing I would build on that, we regularly see that as, as a driver for SD-WAN, you know, people looking at their Internet connectivity strategy. Uh, but we see SD-WAN deployed in, in many more uh, scenarios and, frankly, more impactful scenarios. For us here at Big Leap, the, the most significant one is – deploying SD-WAN at the point of actually bef slightly before a major cloud or, or SaaS migration. Uh, we have plenty of partners mm -hmm. and customers that sell us in a reactive manner where they move to UCAS or they move to a SaaS environment and due to bad internet, the migration struggled and or failed and they came back kind of figuring out how do we fix this in a reactive manner. But what we're seeing a lot more of today is a more proactive manner, acknowledging that these applications no longer live in your network. They live in someone else's network. Your architect, your network needs to be architected accordingly, and it's more responsible to do that before you move that SaaS or cloud, move to that SaaS or cloud application than after. Because if you do it after, it's probably because you have some egg in your face and, and you've had some issues and you're now trying to fix it versus doing it right the first time around. Perfect, thank you both. I have another question here is, for Jeff, are there any firewalls that are not compatible with Big Leaf? Uh, no, I wouldn't say not compatible at all. The fact that the uh, handoff from our router to any firewall looks like a public internet connection and, and is integrated accordingly. And we have plenty of customers using any number of, of different platforms. I think what makes our relationship with WatchGuard unique uh, comes really down to not only the marketing side of, of things like this, but, but really the, the support side of things where both companies are aware of each other's architecture uh, and joint integrations and, and configurations. So if and when there were an issue, there's a better support resource available in, in troubleshooting that issue. Great, thank you. And I have a question here um, for Brendan. So, Brendan, uh, how does WatchGuard SE WAN compare with other UTM vendors like Fortinet, Sophia? Are there any USPs against the competition? 
Okay. Uh, in some cases, UTM vendors don't have SD-WAN technology. I think I saw in the question box someone asked about Sophos. We haven't seen anything from them. In uh, When it comes to uh, Fortinet, uh, they have more uh, similar capabilities to us. I always like to highlight the WatchGuard Rapid Deploy feature, which we've had for many years now. Uh, so we're really strong on the zero-touch deployment capabilities. People also like WatchGuard for the visibility we provide, uh, formerly through WatchGuard Dimension, and now it's available uh, through WatchGuard Cloud, uh, which was just launched a few months ago. Uh, you get great reports, real-time dashboards, and it's an area we're continuing to enhance and update over the coming months as well. Great. Thank you, Brendan, for that. And we have time for a few more questions here, a couple more questions. Um, one I have here is for Jeff. Was there an SLA uptime from big leaves such as 99.999 uptime? Yes. In fact, not only is there an SLA from Big Leap on our platform itself, our standard deployment comes with our own SLA. We also have um, a, a connectivity assurance SLA that for any Big Leap customers that are using three different Internet connections that are on diverse mediums, uh, for example, let's say, uh, coax from a cable company, DSL from a telco, and LTE from a wireless company. Uh, if you are using three diverse paths into our environment, not only will we provide you an SLA on the uptime and performance of Big Leaf itself, but we will provide uh, an uptime assurance SLA for your connectivity itself too, uh, guaranteeing that your location will be up and running uh, if you've got Big Leaf in place. Thank you, Jeff. And it looks like I have two questions here um, for the same topic. So, what, um, Jeff, what is the pricing structure for Big Leaf? Is, do you charge for the platform or is it like speed or data? Yeah, so we are a subscription service. Uh, we charge on a per location basis. So you would purchase Big Leaf services for every single location that you'd want uh, our services at. Uh, the speed package you would pick you would pick uh, based on the internet connectivity you have at a given location. It's not based on the number of internet connections, but rather the aggregate amount of bandwidth. A great example of this is if you had a 50 megabit per second by 10 megabit per second cable internet connection and a 20 megabit per second by 10 megabit per second DSL connection, uh, in that scenario we would see that as 70 megs in the download, 30 megs in the up, uh, we would put you into our uh, 100 by 100 megabit per second platform or speed package. Our speed packages vary anywhere from 10 by 10 up to gigabit by gigabit symmetric. Perfect. And it looks like we have time for one more question. Thank you, Jeff, for that. So we have here um, actually for, for Jeff, does so our circuits purchasable via Big Leaf? Uh, no, we ourselves do not get into the circuit business. Uh, we have a phenomenal partner network of uh, telecom brokers and agents uh, across the U.S. that are happy to assist uh, our customers in identifying the best Internet solutions on a location-by-location -location basis, and we defer uh, that aspect of the business to those partners. Uh, customers are also welcome to bring their own internet connections. We here at Big Leaf are completely carrier agnostic. Uh, you can use any combination of internet providers you want to in, in architecting your Big Leaf solution. Perfect, Jeff. Okay, so it looks like we actually have time for one more, short one here. Uh, do you see an IEEE standard coming to SD-WAN anytime soon? You know, this is all speculation. Uh, I don't think anytime soon, uh, potentially at some point in the future. I don't know if it would be IEEE. I know the Metro Ethernet Forum uh, is actively working on some level of, of shared standard in the hopes of driving towards interoperability between different SD-WAN platforms. Uh, I think that's going to take quite a bit of time to work out. 
Uh, so would I say, will there never be a standard? No. Do I think we'll see it very, very soon? No. Uh, it'll be somewhere in, in the future. Perfect. Thank you. All right. So we're just about at time. Thank you to the presenters, Jeff and Brendan, and thank you to those who attended our webinar today. Hope you found that information useful. And once again, if you want to watch the recording, you can definitely use the same link that you used to enter this. The recording will be available there. So thank you very much, everyone, and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Thanks, Christine. I, I noticed, too, there's a couple of questions we didn't get to yet because of time. We can follow up over email with those people, too. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.